a shirt. I'm not surprised. You should eat something, you know. Do you want me to make some toast? Yeah, big glass of red. That should do the trick. Carla. I'm joking. It's called gallows humour. Yeah, well, just think, once this is all over, you'll be totally shut of it. You'll be behind bars and you can move on properly. Yeah, if I can get through this court case. Yeah, you'll be fine. Tough as old boots you are. Tell me something I don't know. Go on, then. Put some toast on and some coffee. I need a mobile phone. Well, I'll tell you what, you can have one. <gasps> when you're 21. It's a safety thing. If I got lost, I could text you. Go and get your PE kit. And you don't get lost. <laughs> Go on. Hey, listen, love. You really don't have to come to court today, you know. I've told you I want to be there for you. Yeah, I know. It's not going to be very nice for you, is it? What do you mean? It's going to be a lot of mudslinging, you know, Frank's defence trying to make out that there's something we're going on between me and Carla. Well, they can say what they like, because I know you, and I know that you've done absolutely nothing wrong. <laughs> Dad, have a mobile phone. No, but i tell you what you can have. You can get two tin cans and a piece of string. That's what I had <laughs> when I was your age. Now go sweep some chimneys. <laughs> Come on. Hey, me. I had a dream that a monkey was taking my head for nits, then. That's a good dream. Yeah. Why are you sleeping on the sofa? Because Mummy and Daddy aren't friends at the moment. Well, I thought it was going to be happy ever after, Mummy said. Well, you know, sometimes grown-ups fall out and they can't be near each other. But don't you worry, sweetheart, because Mummy and Daddy are going to try really hard to sort things out. Ain't that right, Steve? Hmm. Amy, go and get your lunchbox. This is ridiculous. Oh, tell me about it. What are you still doing here? This is my home, Steve. I'm going nowhere, trust me. Well, we'll see what my solicitor has to say about that. I'm going to go and see her later today, then hopefully she'll have you out of the house by tea time. Oh, hello, sweetheart. Listen, Daddy's going to want you to school. Hooray! Hooray! Steve, come here. <laughs> what would you do without me? Oh. <laughs> I'm sure I have a spot coming. It feels massive. Oh, maybe you're growing another head. Eileen, that is so not funny. Oh, that flaming door keeps sticking. I've asked you a thousand times to look at it. Yeah, I'll see to it, Mum. I cannot have a spot tomorrow. I have a big, important meeting. Why don't you stick a plus on it? Oh! Looking for a new job, Mum? I hope not. Depends what happens to Frank. How do you mean? Well, the court case, if Frank goes down, then the factory does and all. Yeah, it serves him right. Well, I bet your mum would beg to differ. I'm sure she'll be in court, you know, stand by your man and all that. Hey. Fancy uh, nipping out to Roy's? Not a fan of my cooking, are you? Put it this way, after surviving umpteen fires, it'd be a shame to be taken out by a rogue breakfast. <laughs> Come on, Carla, you can do this. This is your last chance, Carla, to do the right thing. Back off, you. You're not even allowed to talk to her. Why don't you tell him that it's a load of lies, eh? Frank, don't jeopardise your case. Good luck. You're going to need it. Sickening. Totally shameless. Hey, how's things? Oh, you know, I'll be glad when this is all over. Yeah, of course. I'm just going to have a signal if you, uh, you're going. All right. See you in there. Yeah, OK. See you inside. How are you bearing up? Listen, be brave. This is your chance to get some justice. Pay Frank back for what he did to you. Yeah? It feels so empty in here without Tracy. It's, it's far too quiet. Not any longer, evidently. Don't worry, I'm not stopping. Just come to pick up some stuff. How are you, love? Oh, practically an orphan. Thanks for asking. Don't be ridiculous. You've turfed me out on the street. Well, you couldn't stay here. It was untenable. Where did you stop last night? Oh, well, me and Amy found a skip by the side of the canal. Tracy. For your information, we've moved into number 13. Oh, what does Steve have to say about that? Well, quite a lot as it goes. But don't worry about him. I'll soon win him round. You can't keep riding roughshod over people. Steve has a right to feel aggrieved. Look, I'll buy you a drink later. It's just show there's no hard feelings. Members of the jury, Frank John Foster is charged with the rape of Carla Connor on the 19th of that September. Woman must be insane. To put him through it is your all this simply out of spite. I shall get what's coming the to her. Is guilty or not guilty? Mr. Millwood. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. 
This is the case of an innocent woman, Carla Connor, having the misfortune to fall in love with a cruel and heartless man. The prosecution submits that Frank Foster is a brutal man who hides behind a mask of respectability. A cold-hearted man, one who, when he's told he can't have something, goes ahead and takes it anyway. For when Mrs. Connor told him that she no longer loved him, it is alleged that he flew into a violent rage and raped Carla Connor. It is the Crown's intention to prove to you that he is a liar, a cold, calculating, sexual predator. He fooled Carla Connor, members of the jury. Please do not let him fool you. Good morning. Oh, good morning to you. What a wonderful accent. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much. Where are you from? Palm Springs. Now, that's in California. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> well, that's where my prunes come from. <laughs> Thanks to you, I am as regular as clockwork. Oh, there you are, Milton. Oh, my dear, you look pretty as a picture. Oh, I thank you, kind mm -hmm. sir. <laughs> Off you go, love, chop, chop. So. Right, good luck with... <laughs> so, what would you like to do today, Milton? I mean, we've got museums, art galleries and ombrado richesse. Mm, well, that sounds great, but I'd really like to see your son's restaurant. Oh, um, I'd rather we didn't. Well, you've told me so much about it. Well, let's go into town instead. All right. Come on. Oh, my dear. Oh, thank you. Didn't you say that your son's place was somewhere in this area? Uh, oh, look at that. Nick's Bistro, huh? Yes, uh, Milton. Well, that's certainly a weird explain. name. I mean, I guess that Nick sounds younger than Roy, huh? Oh, sadly, I'm afraid it's closed today. Oh, well, let's give it a try. You never know. Oh! Open. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Please see me, my dear. It kills me seeing you like this. I'm just glad you're here. Look, I know today's, um, you know, all this is. But just try and focus on what everything's going to be like afterwards. Frank will be put away, and then we can be together. Eh? Oh, I can't even think that far ahead. It's all right for me. I'm single. What about you? Hey, I promised you I'd tell Leanne, and I will. I loved waking up next to you on Saturday. That'll be us. That'll be our life. Me and you together. Carla Connor. Okay, this is it. Wish me luck. Please tell the court what Frank Foster was like at the start of your relationship. He was, um, he seemed lovely. He was attentive and funny, a real gentleman. So were you in love with him? Yeah. And he was in love with you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had no doubt on that score. It, if anything, it... <sighs> yeah, please go on. It was as if he loved me too much. He he loved you too much? Well, he, he wanted to possess me, you know. It's like he wanted to control me. I just felt suffocated. And, you know, it was just like my life wasn't my own anymore. Anyway, that's why I knew I couldn't marry him. Please, can you tell the court what happened when you told him the wedding was off? Well, he was... He was angry. Very angry. He refused to accept it. Like I said, Frank's a very controlling man and he usually gets his own way. The sort of man who won't take no for an answer. Your Honour. Don't lead, Mr Millwood. Apologies, Your Honour. Please continue, Mrs Connor. Um, he begged me not to leave him and I told him I didn't love him anymore. He said it didn't matter. He wanted to marry me anyway. And uh, when you refused? 
totally lost it. He lost control? Sorry, I've never seen him like that before. And um, it terrified me, so I told him to go. Go. Only the way he looked at me, there was just hate in his eyes, and I, I knew. I just knew. Take your time, Mrs. Connor. Would you like a glass of water? Please go on. I thought I was going to die. I was terrified he was actually going to kill me. And I remember in the moment, just thinking that this is it. This is the way my life is going to end. Do you need to take a break, Mrs. Connor? No, sorry, I just want to get on with it. Mrs. Connor, what happened next? Um... Then he completely overpowered me. He threw me on the floor. And pinned me down. And um, I was begging him to stop. I did beg him over and over again. I told him no. No. I told him no. He wouldn't stop. He just did not stop. And uh, he, he raped me. He raped me. Now, this place is terrific. You must be so proud. Oh, indeed. <laughs> see, I see your flat as a work in progress. Oh, is this where you go on about, you know, big cushions and soft furnishings? Well, yeah. And to be fair, soft furnishings will make it feel like a proper home. Yeah, I've got everything I need, haven't I? You know, huge sofa, big telly, dedicated beer fridge. Oh. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Yes, I was wondering, uh, is Roy going to show his face today? Roy? Yeah. Uh, very much doubt it. He hardly ever comes in. Oh. Well, you're more likely to find him in the Rovers, hon. Oh, throwing good money at the competition, huh? Well, that's a confident man, right? Well, it's a secret of good management for you. Delegation. I mean, why keep a dog and bark yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, we mustn't keep these good people from their work. I tell you, this place, it, it blows me away. I mean, who'd have thought Roy ran such a sophisticated operation? Well, that's Roy for you, a sophisticated in an anorak. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I were you, to start divorce proceedings soon as. Well, I've been to see the solicitor. Basically, I'm totally stuffed. How come? Well, I told her that I wanted the marriage and all. I mean, we've not done the business. Yeah, so. fair enough. Apparently, because... Tracy's still willing, but I'm not. Tracy's the one who has to file for the annulment. Eh? That is off its head. Right, so I'm stuck with her. Can't file for divorce for a whole year. Anyway, it serves me right. A 12-month sentence for stupidity. Well, please tell me at least. Chuck her out of your house. Name's on the deeds right next to mine. Mrs Connor, please tell the court how you first met Frank Foster. He was a client. My company, Underworld. Well, uh, we worked for him. And how did he become your business partner? He offered to invest. What sort of state was the business in at that time? Well, we were struggling. Struggling? Yeah, without his... his money, we probably would have gone to the wall. So, Mr Foster saved you from liquidation? You could say that, yeah. So, you had to do whatever was necessary to keep him sweet? Your Honour. Well, yeah, but... There's a name for women like that. <laughs> Honor, please. Miss Davenport, this is not a theatre. Please ask a factual mm. question. You told the court you'd started having doubts about marrying Mr. Foster. Yeah. I imagine most women in that position would confide in a friend. Did you? No, I didn't. Did you speak to anyone about it? 
my solicitor. Why would you speak to your solicitor about matters of the heart? Because I needed to know where I stood. In what way? But I know you're going to twist my words. In what way, Mrs. Connor? Financially. Were you trying to force Mr. Foster out of the business? Not force, exactly. You tried to force him out, but the contract was in his favour. Is that right? Yes, but... I... You were determined to get rid of him, so you came up with a malicious plan to accuse him of a crime he did not commit. No. Frank Foster had served his purpose, and you wanted to get rid of him, didn't you? No, it wasn't like that. But when it proved impossible, you stuck the knife in, and you falsely accused him of rape. Why fate, 12 o'clock? Oh. That's good news. Steve looks as miserable as sin. Unbelievable. No, I'm just saying. He can't have gone well with his solicitor. Bad news for him, it's good news for me. He does look awfully fed up. Fancy watching an episode of Sopranos tonight. No! Oh, let's go mad. Let's watch the whole box set back to back. <gasps> Steady on. Mm. Never been much of a Hellraiser. I did have my ear pierced once. When septic, but... <laughs> hey, so come on, then. What would we do if we could do anything we wanted? I honestly don't know. I'm all talking. And if things go too well, then I start to feel guilty. Look, oh, come on, you do right by Leslie, and everyone needs a break from time to time. I know. It's just that when the guilt does kick in, then I think, what right have I got to be happy? Oh, look, there's someone who'd agree with you. I know, and I feel terrible about that, you two falling out over me. But you think I am more trouble than I'm worth, don't you? Are you fishing for compliments? No, seriously. I don't want people to be horrible to you because of me. Look, you know better than most that you can't take life for granted and things can change in a blink of an eye, which is why I am taking my pleasures where I can find them. Mwah. So, Hubby, how did it go with the solicitor? Well, oh, apparently the ball's in your court. Cheers, mate. Well, you might as well tell me how it is, otherwise I'm going to go and see a solicitor and I'll send you the bill. Apparently, you're the one that has to apply for an annulment. Oh, dear. I thought that might be the case. Well, result? Because we both know that's not going to happen. Right, uh, see you at home, baby. <clears throat> Whatever you've come to say, save your breath. It breaks my heart seeing you together. Because I know it's going to end in tears. Oh, don't look at us then. You know, you're like one of those American teenagers you see on those talk shows. Full of attitude. They're all gobbiness and bluster. I can see right through them. All they need is a hook. I love you, sis. You too. <laughs> Dish the dirt. What's he like to work for? Is he a good boss? Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Best I've ever worked for. Oh. <laughs> Although I am slightly biased, he's my fella. He's your what? My fella. I mean, we've not been together long, but it's going really well. <laughs> Nick's a good man. Um, Milton, there's, there's something I have to tell you. Darling, it's all right. I, I've thought about this. I've worked it out. This isn't Roy's restaurant, is it? So sorry. I got carried away. <laughs> wanted to impress you. Well, you didn't have to lie about it. No, I know, but on that, on that lovely cruise, I mean, everyone was so successful. Right. Bragging about their accomplished offspring. <laughs> My Lucinda is a brain surgeon. <laughs> and what have I got? Roy, shuffling about the greasy spoon the cafe in a cardigan that's seen better days. Well, we can't all be big achievers. I mean, he must have some good point, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, he has. He's... Well, he's kind. Huh? And he's loyal. He's got a very good heart. There you go. Now, what more could you ask for in a son? Hmm? Let's just keep that entrepreneur, shall we? Don't want him getting big-headed. <laughs> we have established that you wanted Frank Foster out of your business and out of your life, but you've not told the court the whole truth, have you, Mrs Connor? I've answered your questions to the best of my ability. I'd like to ask you about Peter Barlow. Oh, you look worried, Mrs. Connor. Are you all right? Peter Barlow's a good friend of mine. And a key witness during this trial. Yes. May I ask uh, how this is relevant, Your Honour? Relevance will become clear throughout the course of questioning. Let's see where it goes, Mr. Millwood. Thank you, Your Honour. Peter Barlow is much more than a friend, isn't he? No. You have feelings for him, don't you? No. 
Well, yes, but just as a friend. Frank Foster was an inconvenience to you and an embarrassment. You wanted him removed from your life to make way for Peter Barlow. Your Honour, Miss Davenport, I think you should Why stop there. Please, the the is Your Honour. Peter Barlow has been nothing but a tower of strength for me. You're dragging a, a good person's name through the mud just to make me look bad. Well, I am not the one on trial here. He is Frank Foster. You know the man who raped me? <laughs> Hello? Right. Now that we've officially moved in together, I thought I'd do as a special tea to celebrate. What planet are you on? All this pretending is giving me the creeps. Steve, we have got to make this work for Amy's oh, sake. Oh, give up. Look, no matter what you say, no matter what you do... Look what happened the last time me and you were rowing all the time. Amy got sick. Don't use our daughter to blackmail me. No, no, I'm not. I will never forgive you for what you did. Never. And if you had one decent bone in your body, you would walk away from this mess and let me get on with what's left of me life. Frank, what the hell is your barrister playing at? I think she's doing a good job. Hey, have we got time for a coffee? I don't know how you can be so calm. How long is she going to let Carla stand there telling one lie after another? And when is she going to show the court those photos? Yeah, patience was never your strong point, was it? She's a liar. And you've got a chance now to prove it in court, in front of a jury, and yet... Alicia hasn't seen the photographs. What? She's a barrister. She's got to do things by the book. I don't. The legal way isn't necessarily the best way. Well... I don't know what your plan is, but... Oh, I'll make sure the jury know about those photos. And when they do, they'll see Carla for what she is. A liar. Come on. And we're back in Coronation Street in half an hour. <laughs>